Today on OC News, we'll talk about yet another fire right up the 57 freeway. The outbreak of hepatitis A. And get ready, Orange County, because the great shakeout is heading our way tomorrow. All this and more coming to you right now. To another episode of OC News, I'm Estrella Monreal. And I'm Scarlett Lobo. OC News is brought to you by the broadcast journalism students at Cal State Fullerton. This morning, many people commuting on northbound on the 57 freeway were stopped in bumper traffic, bumper to bumper traffic and wondering why. Monica Diana has this and more for breaking news right now. Thank you, Estrella. According to the California Highway Patrol, a caller first reported the fire at 2.19 a.m. The Lambert Fire forced authorities to close all northbound lanes on the 57 freeway. A signaler was issued and two lanes reopened to commuters at 7.20 a.m. L.A. County Fire Department determined that two spot fires started just south of the Diamond Bar Boulevard and burned a total of 15 acres. At 8.42 a.m., the L.A. County Fire Department issued a tweet stating that the Lambert Fire was 100% contained. Authorities have made it clear that arson is a possible cause, but the investigation is still ongoing. Now let's take a look at what's happening around the nation today. In Maryland, a shooting took place this morning at Emerton Business Park in Edgewood, located 20 miles northeast of Baltimore. Shots were heard around 8.58 a.m. Three people died and two remain in critical condition at Shock Trauma Hospital with gunshot wounds to the head. The shooter was identified by Hawford County Police as 37-year-old Radi Labib Prince. All five victims are believed to be employees of Advanced Granite Solutions, a home improvement company where Prince had been working for the past four months. Police in Delaware also are searching for the suspect, who they say traveled to Wilmington, Delaware, and shot a man late Wednesday morning. Let's hear now from Maryland and Hofford County Sheriff Jeffrey Goller. We are again just calling for the public's help not to try to encounter this suspect, but if you see him, please pick up the phone and call 911 and let your local law enforcement know. He's gone from Hartford County up to Delaware. Uh, we, we don't know where, uh, what his <laughs> intentions are or what his next stop may be. This Justin, the ATF and allied law enforcement agencies have apprehended Prince a short time ago in Delaware. Details will be available soon. I'm Monica DeAnda. Back to Estrella and Scarlett at the desk. DACA has been a huge topic on discussion these past couple months. And today, Cal State Fullerton's College Legal Clinic is hosting a special event open for all students. Alaya Vestara is live by the Titan Studio Union with more. Hi, I'm Alaya Vestara and we're here at the Titan Student Union in the Bradford Room where a DACA workshop will soon be taking place. Now later, I, or, uh, earlier, excuse me, um, I interviewed a couple of interns at the college um, legal College Legal Clinic um, and asked him a few questions about the workshop. My name is Alexis and I'm interning at the CLC. And my name is Karen and I'm also interning at the CLC. The event is for, um, it's in regards to DACA, so it'll be talking about um, their, the process that's going on now because of the new administration and how they're, you know, terminating DACA and it's basically going to be a forum with an immigration attorney. He will be explaining what the process would be afterwards, now that they've registered and they've sent, uh, sent in their renewal for their, uh, their, their visa that they have, um, giving information on you know, what to do as a dreamer, especially because in the school you know, there's so many dreamers. It's a non-biased event and it's open to everybody in CSU app, so we welcome everybody to come and just um, learn more, educate yourself more on what, what's happening and just get more information with us. If you're interested in attending this workshop, be sure to stop by the Bradford Room at the TSU tonight. The event will be taking place from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Now, reporting live from the TSU, I'm Alia Becerra with OC News. Now back to our ladies at the desk. Thank you, Alia, for that information. On another news, Samantha Lee Siata, a Beaumont High School English teacher, was arrested and placed on administrative leave by the Beaumont Unified School District for suspicion of unlawful sexual intercourse with a minor. The arrest comes after a student told authorities there had been ongoing sexual intercourse for several months. 
The two had communicated inappropriately on various messaging platforms. Authorities believe there may be other victims that are encouraged to contact police, Detective Wells, on the number shown below. 951-769-8500. Coming up next, we will talk about how yoga can save a life. And give you the latest on what Ka Kaepernick has to say in the world of football. Bye-bye. Hi. Hoping for a crisp breeze to help keep you alert. He took a sip of water, too. That'll probably help. You were probably going to turn down the radio, too, so you could focus, right? Probably OK isn't OK. Right? If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. I think the water line is what really drove it home. I blew on him. Don't take out your fall wardrobe too soon because summer isn't ready to leave. Melissa Vega, tell, tell us the latest on weather. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining me for this week's weather. As we got to experience a brief fall temperatures this week, warm temperatures are returning. Let's start off by taking a look at the current weather around the U.S. Looking in the, at the East Coast, temps today were in the high 60s. In the Midwest, temps were in the high 70s and mid 80s. And in the East or West Coast, temps were also in the high 70s and high 80s. As warm temperatures are going to start kicking off this weekend, we will see a heat wave approaching. The heat wave will be making its way from the east, the west coast up to the east coast. And let's take a look at this weekend's um, weather forecast for around the U.S. Starting off with the east coast, temps will be in the high 70s, with Charlotte being at high 79, New York being at 72, and Boston at high 72, 73. And in the Midwest, Kansas City will be in the high of 74, Oklahoma City, high of 76. It's St. Louis at a high of 78. Now, taking a look at the current weather here in Fullerton, we had quite a, quite a sunny day today, high in the 85s. Currently, the weather is at 80 degrees, and temperatures will drop to a low of 60 degrees. The winds today are at our 8 miles per hour, and you can go ahead and catch that sunset at 613. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the weather for this week's uh, at Fullerton's forecast. So starting off with Thursday and Friday, we won't see quite much of a change in weather. Thursday being 79 degrees with, 62, with a low of 62. Friday will be the coolest day of the week with a high of 76 and a low of 55. And gearing off for the weekend, we will see those temperatures start to rise. Looking over at Saturday, we will see a high of 70, or 89 with a low of 60. Sunday, we will see a high of 98 with a low of 64. And Sunday, we, it will be our warmest day with a high of 102 and the low of 67. Now, make sure to please stay warm, stay cool and safe out there. Also, make sure to set your thermostat to 78 to prevent the possibility of a power outage. That's going to do it for weather today. Thank you for joining me. Thank you so much, Melissa. And don't forget that tomorrow, the 19th, will be the great checkout at exactly 1019 a.m. So drop, cover, and haul. Yeah, especially, I mean, we always have to be prepared because we, li we do live in the state of California, right? Yes, we have been expecting a big earthquake for a long time. Yes, and also an outbreak of hepatitis A has affected Southern California and yoga is being taught to help prevent teen suicide. Jason Garleen has more on these stories. Thank you, I'm Jason Garl. I'm bringing you the latest news in health. Last week, Governor Jerry Brown uh, declared a state of emergency after it was reported that a hepatitis A cases in Santa Cruz, San Diego, and Los Angeles have hit record highs. Over the last 11 months, over 529 people have been affected by the virus, and 17 have died from it. According to the CDC, since 2015, there have been a total of 1,390 cases countrywide. This is the second largest outbreak in the United States within the last 12, 20 years. San Diego is experiencing the worst of the epidemic, with about 500 cases in their city alone. Most of the, of the affected are homeless. This cause for fear because if the virus is not treated, it can spread to others and in some cases cause death. Governor Brown's call for a state of emergency is in part to increase the amount of vac vaccinations being distributed to the homeless and other efforts to contain the virus from spreading. 
As of right now, the outbreak is not bad enough to encourage the general public to go and get the vaccine. This past weekend in Costa Mesa, a local activist group protested the act of circumcision. Scarlett Lobo has a story. Signs with the word circumcision. Education, not amputation. And protesters dressed in all white with fake blood stains on their crush area got the attention of drivers and pedestrians in Costa Mesa last Sunday. People don't like change. People don't like seeing that there's something wrong with society that has to be changed. And so there's a knee jerk reaction to oppose it. But uh, we're getting a lot of support here. Um, people are giving us the thumbs up. They're taking cards and we're finding out across the coast. People from the nonprofit charity Bloodstain Men claim that circumcision is absolutely traumatic to the babies. It's, it's not normal to cut off parts of someone's body without their consent. The United States Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, better known as CDC, released a draft policy at the end of 2014, suggesting that male circumcision is an important public health measure. However, the group of protesters say circumcision is devastating to the babies to the point where they pass out from pain. Some drivers yell out of their windows against the protesters who remain peaceful. Disneyland. And I don't know if your microphone picked up that. Others actually joined the protest as the day went on. I was actually in the drive-thru at Del Taco behind me here, and, um, and I just saw the signs, and when I started reading them, um, you know, I'm one of, one of the only friends I know that's uncircumcised, and, uh, and it's a great cause. Since 11 a.m., protesters have been here on 17th and Newport Boulevard giving information about circumcision. For OC News, I'm Scarlett Lobo. A Colorado yoga instructor is doing her part in helping prevent teen suicides. Over the last three years, there have been 14 students in the Academy School District 20 that have taken their own life. This is what caused Kimberly Wilson to take action. She is providing a 12-week program for the students at Da Vinci Academy that provides a proactive approach to mental health. She says yoga changed her life for the better, and she thinks that she can teach children the same mind-body connection that helped her. She teaches these kids yoga in hopes that it will help them manage their stress levels and prevent them from developing anxiety. In addition to learning yoga poses, the kids also have a journal to talk about their lives. The kids say their favorite aspect of the class is that Wilson listens to their problems and helps them work through it. Their stre uh, Wilson hopes to expand the program to more schools and grades as time goes on. That's it for Health This Week. I'm Jason Garline. Back to you guys at the desk. After the break, we'll talk about the hashtag that is growing across social media platforms. And about Girl Scouts being inspired by science and technology. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Searching for help with Dachshund Reading. Uh, how can I help my daughter with her reading? Information on hot water heating. Uh, no. Sarah's bright, but when she's reading, she has trouble sounding out the words. World music playing track now. No. Let me try. Our daughter gets confused about which details in a story are important. Which paper towels are most absorbent? What? Here are five product reviews. Why are you not getting me? See, I told you. Wait, I was trying to show you how Sarah feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. For the one in five kids with learning and attention issues, this is what life can feel like. ExploreUnderstood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues designed to help your child thrive in school and in life. Understood.org, because understanding is everything. Today in entertainment, gymnast Makayla Marone speaks out. Demi Lovato opens up an Ama Amazon chief steps down. We'll now go to Maria Valdez for the update. Thank you, ladies. Reporting on entertainment today for OC News, I'm Maria Valdez. In the wake of the Me Too hashtag, Olympic gymnast Makayla Marone is sharing her story of sexual abuse. Marone alleged on Twitter, U.S. gymnast doctor Larry Nassar repeatedly molested her beginning when she was 13. She says he told her his actions were, quote, medically necessary treatment. 
U.S. Gymnastics in a statement expressed outrage over Nassar's alleged abuse. The organization pressed Mar praised Maroney for coming forward and said it is a, quote, strengthening and enhancing its policies and procedures regarding abuse. Michigan State Attorney General said in July that Nassar is facing numerous counts of sexual criminal conduct. That's on top of federal child pornography charges he pleaded guilty to in July. Maroney posted her message using hashtag MeToo, which started in the wake of the Harvey Weinstein sex abuse allegations. She wrote in part, quote, people should know that this is not just happening in Hollywood. This is happening everywhere. Demi Lovato is opening up about her struggles with bulimia. She released a new YouTube documentary Tuesday, Simply Complicated, and reveals that food is still her biggest challenge and that it is something she constantly thinks about. Lovato also spoke about her former drug addiction. She says regular exercise has helped her from relapsing into drugs and alcohol. Lovato says she is being open about her life because she's learned that secrets made you sick. She said the key to being happy is to tell your truth and be okay with all of your answers. Amazon Studios Chief Price Roy has resigned amid harassment allegations. The controversy may prove to be a setback for Amazon's original video efforts. According to an Amazon spokesperson, Price's resignation came five days after the producer accused him of sexual harassment and was placed on a leave of absence. The Hollywood Reporter published an article detailing harassment allegations against Price, made by Issa Hackett, a producer of the Amazon series A Man in the High Castle. An Amazon spokesperson said Albert Cheng, who took charge last week, will continue as interim head of the studio. That's all for today. Back to Scarlett and Estrella. The NFL executive meeting are currently taking place in New York, where high NFL officials, all 32 owners and representatives from the Players Union are closely discussing the national anthem protest. Former 49ers quarterback Colin Pagernis was the first to begin taking a knee back during the 2016 NFL preseason. And since then, his message of racial injustice has spread to several teams around the league. Commissioner Roger Goodwill made a statement this morning about what the NFL is focusing on when it comes to players protesting. It's protest at this point, um, and this is something that what we try to do is deal with the underlying issue and understand what it is that they're protesting and try to address that matter. And so let me finish if you can. So the important thing for us is to be able to do that and take that opportunity to make real differences in our community. And that is really what's going to ultimately be the important aspect for us long term, because this is a long term issue. We need to make sure we do that in the right way. President Trump has been vocal about this displeasure of NFL players taking a knee during the national anthem. This morning, when he found out Commissioner's Goodwill will not force players to stand for the Stars Splager banner, Trump tweeted, quote, The NFL has decided that it will not force players to stand for the playing of our national anthem. Total disgrace, disgrace for our great country." End quote. White House officials have also commented on today's MFL executive meeting that focused on the protest. Sarah Huckabee Sanders offered an optimistic view for what the NFL players, owners as well as the president, are trying to accomplish. I think it's certainly a step in the in the right direction. Uh, as we've said many times before, the president supports standing for the national anthem, saluting the flag, uh, and honoring those men and women in uniform that fight to protect it. Ongoing conversations about how the league and players can work together to support causes and issues of social injustice will be continued when they meet again on October 31st. The Major League Baseball playoffs continue and Cal State Fullerton took on their rival Long, Long Beach State in volleyball. Cynthia Vargas Recio has this and more in sports. Hey sports fans, Cynthia Vargas Recio here with your latest sports update. Taking you from MLB playoffs, how a star NBA forward may have just ended his season and the latest on your local Titan athletics. Let's get started. It's been quite a crazy last couple of days for baseball fans as both the ALCS and NLCS series have had fans glued to their TVs. In the National League, the Los Angeles Dodgers now only stand one game away from sweeping the Chicago Cubs 
and making their debut in the World Series for the first time since 1988. The Dodgers have had six straight postseason wins, and with their performance Wednesday night, it doesn't look like they plan on stopping anytime soon. Fan favorite Andre Ethier returned on the roster Tuesday night with a home run in the top of the second, followed by five more scored runs by the Dodgers. And now Hendricks back to work, and Andre Ethier sends one deep to right. This is way back, and goodbye! The periphery, they'll take. Taylor into center field, hits that one well. That is back, and that one is long gone! Chris Taylor! in those first two games. That's a swing and a miss and it gets away from Contreras. This will bring in another run. The ball rolls into the dugout. Jansen delivers and a swing and a miss. The ball game is over and the Dodgers up three games to none in this best of seven series. In tonight's game four matchup, the Dodgers will face the Cubs in Chicago with the chance to sweep the series and hopefully bring a World Series title back to LA. The Houston Astros led the ALCS series 2-0 and looked like they may win the whole thing, but all hopes of a third win were shut down after rookie Aaron Judge sent a home run into center field and the Yankees made a comeback to the, tie the series 2-2. Take a look. Guriel did the rest. Judge hits one into center, a monster shot. His second of the series and it's four to one. In the air to left, back at the wall, it's off the wall. Tie game, Judge to second, it's 4-4. Four four. Here goes Gregorius, Yankees lead. Into the gap and two runs are gonna score. Judge Gregorius Sanchez delivers 6-4 New York should end it Gardner wants it series is tied at two apiece game five is currently underway in the top of the ninth inning and the Yankees lead the Astros 5-0 in NBA news, the Boston Celtics Cleveland Cavaliers game opener came to a pause Tuesday night after forward Gordon Hayward collided with LeBron James and fell to the ground with a horrific looking leg injury. Probably hit the biggest shot in Cavs history. They're going up. Oh my goodness. Hayward came down so hard. Oh, Hayward broke his leg. Hayward has broken his leg. Hayward has broken his leg. Hayward was treated by doctors on the court, and players from both teams checked on him as he left on a stretcher. His injury is said to be a fractured tibia with a dislocated ankle. It is still unreported if Hayward will need surgery and how much of the season he will miss. But for now, the Boston Celtics will play their season without their star forward. Lastly, we bring it on home to our Cal State Fullerton Athletics. Men's soccer is looking to bounce back from a tough loss against UC Riverside this past weekend. The guys will face off against UC Irvine tonight and have a rematch against UC Riverside this Saturday at Titan Stadium. Men's soccer now stands in third place in the Big West Conference. Women's volleyball faced a tough match against Long Beach State last night. Reporter Taylor Martinez has more from the game. Titans Volleyball played conference rivals Long Beach State tonight and what an upset it was after falling three. The Titans trailed right behind Long Beach the entire game but brought their record down to 4-17. The team had some great kills tonight from Caitlin Nielsen, Megan Carlson, and Maddie Schneider. Maddie Schneider led the team with her second consecutive game of throwing down double-digit kills. Tonight, she made 15 of those. I was just going to practice and games, just saying, okay, no matter what set I get, I'm just gonna be aggressive, I'm gonna hit hard. Uh, anything that I get, anything that comes my way, I'm just gonna hit as hard as I can and be as aggressive as I can. Head coach Ashley Preston stayed encouraging to the girls throughout the entire game. Communication level came down as the score went down. So I think we could have played harder, longer. Communication played a huge, huge role in that tonight. We definitely should have stepped it up and kept it throughout the whole game. Talking to Coach after the game, she said she wants to work on the communication of the team and hope to bring a W back to the boards. Reporting for OC News, I'm Taylor Martinez. 
And that's going to do it for your sports news here today. I'm Cynthia Vargas Riccio, and back to you ladies at the desk. Thank you, Cynthia. Woo woo! Go Dodgers! Girl Scouts gathered together to learn at the STEM spot this past weekend, and Kelsey Brick has more on this heartwarming story. Girl Scouts all over the world may sell cookies and go to camp, but that's not yeah, all they do. The Girl Scouts of Orange County attended the Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics oh. Expo to learn and earn their My STEM Life badges. I was able to talk to Genevieve Payton, Cadet Girl Scouts, about her experience before and after the expo. I love science and technology and engineering and math, and I really can't wait to go to all of the booths and learn all about it because those are my four favorite subjects. I really liked when we did the uh, learning how to model with clay. We uh, learned how the different structures of how engineers would make things out of clay and out of like other materials. The girls were able to participate in activities that sparked the minds of math lovers, science crime labs, as well as dig for their very own rocks at the geology booth. Girl Scouts has always been about empowering young women, and Charlene Lowe, who presented her Gold Award project at the Expo, said that STEM can empower women as well. Right now, the STEM fields are so male-dominated, and so if we promote STEM to all the girls over here, hopefully we'll see more female participation in STEM, and that'll empower other girls to continue on with the STEM field. The National Girl Scouts have been creating new STEM badges, so all these programs are trying to encourage more girls to join. I really like because Girl Scouts, you get to help people, and that's really, really enforced, and also being kind to everybody. Girl Scouts from all over Orange County attended the STEM Expo at Cal State Fullerton on Sunday, October 15th. With tons of fun activities, science, and friends, the girls and volunteers explored all day. For OC News, I'm Kelsey Brink. What a great news. Thank you, Kelsey. Thank you for joining us on another episode of OC News. Don't forget to follow us on all social media platforms at OC News CSUF. That will do it for us. Have a good evening and see you next week here on OC News.